Let's talk about encoding. Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and we are here today to talk about one-time pads. Now, I'm not a cryptographer, I don't know a super whole lot, but there is super simple things that I do know, and one of those is a one-time pad. You can look into the history about this, but one-time pads have been around for a very long time, and if used correctly, one-time pads are unbreakable. They're unbreakable because they're only used one time, which we'll get to in this video. But to use one-time pads is actually pretty simple. Uh, what you're essentially doing is you're taking a message, uh, you are transcribing that message you know, into numbers, you're taking those letters, you're turning them into numbers, you're encoding those numbers, and then you're transmitting that message, that encoded message. Then when I get this message, I am decoding those numbers and then transcribing those numbers back into letters. So it's actually a pretty simple process that involves pretty simple math that you could teach a 10 year old in about 15 minutes. Um, it's not super complicated, it just requires diligence and being paying attention to what you're doing. And if you can do those things, you can encode a one-time pad, which like I said, as far as I understand it, is actually, if done, properly done, completely unbreakable. So it is an extremely useful skill that you should have as an American Minuteman because sometimes you like to send encoded text messages to your boys and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So let's talk about the one-time pad. So let's take a simple message just for an example's sake. We have be brave. Super simple message, and we're just gonna walk through how we would encode that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these letters into numbers. Now, the way we do that here is there is a standard conversion table. The conversion table number one, uh, English code dash one, uh, that most one-time pad systems use. Now, you don't have to use this specific conversion table. You can use whatever conversion table you want. Honestly, um, I would just stick to the normal conversion table. You can Google that. Uh, you can get a one-time pad machine, which is where I got this one-time pad from, uh, or you can uh, make up your own. It doesn't really matter. I just use the standard one because the encoding part happens after we transcribe the numbers into letters. Transcribing the numbers into letters is not the encoding part. So I just stick with the standard table because why not, right? It, it doesn't add security to have a different table. I don't think you might feel different in which case you can, but for now, when you're learning, just stick to the standard table, okay? So the standard table B turns into the number 70, okay? E turns into the number two. B, like we said, is 70. R turns into the number 82. A turns into one. V turns into 85, and E turns into two, okay? So we've transcribed our numbers into letters. Now, when you're doing this, use paper, okay? And then keep your lines as straight as possible. That's gonna help you out later. Trust me, I've learned that one the hard way. Now, a one-time pad consists of about 250 digits. Hopefully you're going to be able to see that. Let's make see if we can focus on that. Uh, I'm not sure that's focusing right now. There we go. 250 digits. Okay. That first set of five digits, we're going to ignore that first set of five digits actually, um, is showing which pad to use. So imagine you have 10 of these pads. Okay. That first set of five digits identifies the pad. So we don't use the first set of five digits when encoding, because if I have 10 one-time pads, I'm looking through on which one to use, uh, I'm gonna go by those first five digits. So when it comes to encoding and decoding, skip the first five digits, okay? So in this case, just reading off my one-time pad here that I got from, from a one-time pad printer, again, different video on that. We'll talk about making one-time pads later, don't worry about that. So I'm gonna start with the second batch of numbers. So I have one, zero, five, seven, two, one, two, nine, one, nine, four. Okay. So those are my one time pad numbers. Now to encode this message, I'm going to subtract. 
okay? I think, I think it ends up being called modular subtraction, which you'll see why in a second, but we're gonna subtract, okay? So to encode, we're gonna subtract. So let's use a different color here in order to demonstrate what we're doing. So seven minus one is six, zero minus zero is zero. Two minus five, so the two is less than five, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend this is a 12, okay? 12 minus five is seven. Seven minus seven is zero. Zero, again, you can't subtract two, so that's 10. 10 minus two is eight. Eight minus one is seven. Two minus two is zero. One or 11 minus nine is two. Eight minus one is seven. 15 minus nine is six. And 12 minus four is eight. So this set of numbers right here, that is my encoded message, okay? That's our encoded message. Now, a couple things about that. First of all, we, you don't need spaces in here, okay? You, there's no reason you have to have spaces. You can just smash all those into one big number, okay, and send it. You can break it up in random places. It doesn't matter. What's important is that this string of numbers in order stays in order, okay? But spaces don't matter. So usually when I send these, right, I'm gonna, just gonna send that as one smashed big number, okay? Now, before we send it, we need to decode it which we're gonna do in a minute, but let's just talk about sending it, right? So we would decode it to make sure that we got it, and then we would send that encoded message. When we send the encoded message, we are going to include the very first five numbers off our one time pad. Remember earlier, if I can get this to pull back up here, uh, let's see how that does. So remember earlier, we skipped those first set of five digits, right? And we started with that second set of one digits, that second set of five digits, that 10572, right? That's where we started the encoding. So now that we're gonna send the message, we're gonna include this 23197, these five, first five digits. We're gonna include those in our transmission. And the reason we're gonna include those is, so that again, if I have 10 of these, I know which pad to use in order to encode and decode that message. So our encoded message, our final encoded message would look like this. It would look two, three, one, nine, seven. That designates which one time pad to use. Then we're gonna add our encoded message. Six, zero, seven, zero, eight, seven, zero, two, seven, six, eight. And that's it. That's our encoded message that we would transmit. You can text that, you can post it in the New York Times, you could uh, email it. it, it doesn't really matter because this is, the, this is the code, right? You can transmit that however you so desire because that's the encoded message that no one can break. We'll talk about why in a second, okay? So when I now receive the message, right? You've sent me this cool encoded message, I'm going to decode it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out my one-time pads. I'm gonna find out which one I'm using. 23197, okay? I found 23197. I got that, I know how I'm gonna decode it. Now, I'm gonna start at that second set of numbers and then I'm gonna to start to decode it. So I'll take my second set of numbers after I've written out my message and I will decode it. So I will go with 10572. One, two, nine, one, nine, four. And now I will add in order to uh, get the correct, the correct message, right? So we're gonna do them up adding again. So it's seven, zero, five, seven plus five, that is 12. So I drop the one and I have two. Seven plus zero is seven, eight plus two is 10. I drop the one. Right, and now I'm at uh, zero. Excuse me, back here, we, uh, seven plus five is 12, I drop the one, I have two, right? Seven plus zero is seven, eight plus two is 10, drop the one, I have a zero. Seven plus one is eight, uh, two plus zero is two, nine plus two is 11, we're dropping the one, so we have a one. Seven plus one is eight, nine plus six is 15, drop the one, we have a five. Eight plus four is 12, now we should have a two. So now, 
if I did this correctly, and this is why you encode and decode before you send, right? 7070222. 7070821851852. Okay, good. So I know that I have decoded it correctly. And then to finish your decoding of the message, you would go back to your conversion table that converts your, this is all this isn't, this is not encoded anymore. This is just your letters turned into numbers. So now we're gonna turn those letters back, or those numbers, excuse me, we're gonna turn those numbers back into letters. And so we have seven. So I look on my little sheet here, seven is always gonna be two numbers. So I know seven zero, that's a B. Two I know is an E. Seven zero again, we know that's a B. Eight two, that is an R. A is a one. Eight five is a V and two is an E. So we have our message, be brave. Now, from there, I would take this one-time pad and I would burn it, I would eat it, I would crumple it up and throw it in the fire. I would somehow destroy this because this is the only way that that message can ever be decoded. And then I would never, ever use this one-time pad again. And that's why it's called a one-time pad. You use it one time, and then it's done, right? And then next time I wanna send a message or I need to send a message back, then I would use a different one-time pad. Now, a couple notes about this. First of all, you would have to make sure that you and whoever you're exchanging messages with have identical copies of the one-time pad. That's where a one-time pad printer can come in, come in handy, it can be super helpful, right? Uh, but you have to make sure you have multiple identical copies of the one-time pad. Then once you encode and send your message, you trash your one-time pad. Once you receive and decode a message, you trash your one-time pad. And then again, next time you would use a different one-time pad. The reason it's unbreakable is because it never repeats. Because you're using a different one-time pad every time, there's no recognizable pattern for anyone who would be trying to break your code message to understand, discern, and then therefore break your code, right? So when you, the way it gets broken is, you keep using the same one-time pad. That's how you get in trouble. But if you never use the one-time pad again, then you're in the clear, then you're safe, okay? Second thing, some of you are gonna say, well, how do I know that seven zero, how do I know that those are two numbers? And on the conversion table, it's actually pretty simple. So if we can look at this one more time, Second there. So there we go. As you can see on those conversion tables, so I know that seven, which I think is in this first row here, seven is always gonna be two digits, right? Eight is always gonna be two digits. Nine is always gonna be two digits. One, two, three, four, five, six are always single digits, right? So if I see a seven, I automatically know, okay, that's gonna take up two different two different uh, numbers, right? That, that's gonna require two numbers. So seven, I know it's two numbers, it's seven, zero. Okay, well, I can find that. Two, it's always two is just by itself. And that's how you can determine which, which letter and number combination works. It's actually really simple once you do it a couple times. When it comes to making one-time pads, you have a couple different options. The two that I would suggest are either the manual method, which means you're gonna take five, one, five dice, each one of them is a 10-sided die, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Each one of those die, you take five of them in one hand, you roll them, okay? It's gonna give you five random numbers. You do that 50 times, and then you'll get 250 characters for your one-time pad. And you have just created a truly random one-time pad. And the option that I would recommend is the one-time pad printer. Uh, I have these on my website. You can use that or not use it. You can absolutely do it the manual way. It is truly random, truly unbreakable. This just makes your life a lot easier and I have a separate video on that. I think one-time pads are a extremely important American Minuteman skill because if we're gonna say we're American Minutemen and we need to transmit and communicate messages at points, having the ability to encode and decode messages that are unbreakable is a real, real big deal. The truth is that one-time pads are super simple. I've taught my nine-year-old how to do one-time pads, right? If you practice at it just a little bit, it takes very little upkeep in order to do. You just have to understand that subtract means encode and addition means decode. 
I just think of it like when I'm sending you a message, I'm doing all the work and subtracting is harder than addition. At least it is in my brain. Uh, so when I'm sending you the message, I'm at subtracting because I'm doing the work. When you get the message, you're adding because adding is easier to decode it, right? Because receiving the message is easier than sending the message. That's how I remember it. But once you can remember that and you can just do simple math, you're gonna be okay. The problem is people tend to go too fast, do the math too quickly, you're not paying attention, you, or you start misaligning your numbers and things starting to get skewed. That's where people run into issues. But the actual process is pretty simple. You just have to be diligent and focus on it in order to make sure everything matches up and you're gonna be fine. You could probably learn how to do one-time pads uh, in about 15 minutes after you watch this video once or twice and sit down and just work on it. So I know that, that can be a little nerdy and a little boring and I hope that you find it helpful and I hope that you're able to go out there, make some one-time pads and encode your messages so that you can be a little bit more dangerous and a much better Minuteman. Do brave deeds and endure.